K-State basketball coach Jerome Tang with us now. Coach, after missing the NCAA tournament last year, kind of reload the roster in a lot of different ways. Um, what were the big differences between year one and year two at K-State, and then where does that take you moving forward? Now, Mason, that's a great question. Um, our first year, we had enough, and we hit lightning in the bottom, right? Like, no injuries, no loss of play. I mean, it was it went as smooth as it could have went. And we had the success that we had at the end of the year. And then last year, on October 28th, I walked out of the practice and we're, we're going to be really, really good, right? Because we, we had enough. But then life hits, you know, Quez Glover's injury, Naquan's situation, things that we can't control, and therefore we didn't have enough. So our plan moving forward was to have an abundance. We wanted an abundance so we could lose a guy, we can have an injury, whatever, and still have an NCAA tournament team. I feel like our staff and I have done that. I, w w I don't want to touch too much on last year, but it does fascinate me, the situation where obviously Naquan not available and Quez not available. Like, how tough is that in the moment where, because I viewed last season for you guys, at the end of the year, you could reflect on that and say, that was a pretty significant reason why the season went like it did, ending in the IT. But in the moment, you guys still have to fight and try and find a way to make the current group work to get to your goal. How tough is that, though, when you're in the thick of that, having to fight through all of it and then still realize we got to focus in on this and move forward and yeah, you got you got to be able to put that stuff behind you and like work with what you have uh, great coach uh, to Vesta Anderson told me one time coach who's here right and that's what we did we coached who was there and uh, we won seven overtime games you know we lost three buzzer beaters uh, you know and still 19 wins uh, you know three top 10 teams in the country we beat uh, four top 25 teams you know so um, we, I just, but in hindsight, looking back, we as a staff, we looked at things, what can we have done differently um, that could allow that team to have their chance in the NCAA tournament? And so hopefully we can learn those things and apply it to this year. And uh, But the number one thing was, hey, let's have a roster that's deep enough to sustain an injury. So with the deep roster that you guys have, how, how do you envision minutes shaking down and the fit of the team? Because I think People on the outside look at it and realize there's a lot of individual talent, but how does it end up coming together with guys that maybe have crossover positions they've played in the past? Like, what has the process been in figuring that out for you guys? Uh, you know, uh, players determine playing time, not, not coaches. And so every day we, we line it up, we compete, we chart everything, wins in particularly, and uh, guys who give us the best chance to win are going to be on the floor. And, uh, you know, there'll be nights that one guy's on and one guy's off and then we've got someone, I don't have to call a timeout, now I can sub somebody in and, and have it there. But they, they'll determine that. And our guys, you know, we talk about having an alignment with the assignment and the assignment is to get to the NCAA tournament and make a run at the national championship. And uh, all these guys want to win. And, and so they're gonna do the things that uh, need to be done uh, to help us win. And for us as coaches, we gotta be real clear with what that is. A lot of newcomers on the team, but I want to ask you about the three guys that returned from last year's team and how significant it is that those guys made that commitment to come back, David, Michaela, and then uh, also Taj Manning. What do they mean to the team, and what do you see them giving to the team this year? You know, those three guys mean a ton to the program and to our staff because um, they, they trusted us to come back. Ta Taj and David are in their third year of college. That's, that's you know, at K-State. Yeah. Right, that is so rare now, and so but David had options, right? And uh, he cared enough about us. He apparently is having a good enough of a time, and he believed in our plan for him that, that he chose to come back. And he's providing great leadership right now. And, uh, his, his confidence is growing. His versatility is growing, and uh, he's going to be an integral part of, of helping us win a lot of games this year. Uh, Taj, man, you know, I, I even. Um, Asked Taj that if he really wanted to play, you know, play, then maybe there was someplace else. And he said, Coach, I, I want to be happy. And I've seen guys go other places and uh, want to play, uh, to play, and they're not happy. And, uh, and he said, I, I, I'm happy. And I'm going to do whatever I can to help the team win and whatever you need me to do. And so, uh, you know, my, and I just have this a big heart for that kid. I absolutely love him. And, uh, you know, Caleb Rich is a talent. And we have to figure out a way to get him some playing time, but he's got to earn it and he's got to build his consistency. Because uh, he's down the road, he's going to be a heck of a player. And I want it to be a K-State, but uh, he's got to grow in his consistency. And if he's if he's the 90% the of the best version of himself every day, 
you know, then uh, he, he will be on the floor. Side. Where do you think the, the biggest spots in his game has he improved from what people saw last season to where he is now entering this season? Well, his conditioning has gotten better, and uh, just his consistent work ethic has gotten better. Uh, he, he's got some the ability to, like, make easy buckets, you know, go catch it two feet above the rim, and, you know, just, just things that you can't coach. And, uh, but uh, him buying into the defensive principles and, and building habits with his, his, how he defends and how he closes out, and, you know, just uh, you know, fighting through fatigue, you know, the, those, those three things, he, 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 if he continues to grow in those areas, then we'll get to see that special talent uh, display itself. The way that you guys capped off adding to the team was Coleman Hawkins. What has he brought to you guys, and what's it been like getting him kind of assimilated into your guys' culture at K-State? You know, um, you know, Coleman is a very talented basketball player that is extremely versatile. Uh, he's like a 6'10 quarterback, right? Uh, and he gets great joy out of watching his teammates have success. You know, some guys, you know, they get excited, their energy builds if they get a dunk, if they hit a three. For him, it's like making a good pass to a teammate. And when your teammates, you play with him, and you know he's going to find you if you're open, it's fun to play with him. And so he gives us, uh, you know, just a weapon in a different way in that he can shoot and he can score. But, man, he also is like having another point guard on the floor. Now, also one of the, the guys that I would I would bring up here is talking about Doug McDaniel and how he's worked out for you guys. What What do you get out of him? Well, Doug is blessed with special legs. His speed is different, and, uh, and both offensively and defensively, and how he can disrupt uh, another team's offense and uh, just really guard the ball, and how, like, like Buddy, he can get easy buckets. Doug can get easy buckets because of his speed that he can just go by people. And, and so, and then his willingness to pass the ball and, and you know, grow as a point guard, and, uh, it gives you something different. And late shot clock, he can go get his own shot. That, that, that's, that's a luxury. The other, Max Jones is here today. You also have CJ Jones. What do you envision the two Joneses being like on the floor? The, the two Joneses, uh, to me, have been the biggest surprise. And, they, uh, and I say that in a very positive way that uh, from where they walked on campus at the start of the summer to where they are right now, they've made the, the greatest increase as players. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard to keep them off the floor. Now, you talked about the, the team and, and competing and obviously the goals that you guys always have every year. I don't think they change for you guys. It's competing at the top of the Big 12, making the NCAA tournament. When you see your team picked eighth by the league coaches, what is it that you think they're seeing in you guys right now that you probably think they're wrong about, but what is it that they see on the outside thing? At K-State, middle of the pack, they're not going to be at the top of the league in the top three or whatever. Um. I don't think it's what they see in us. I think it's what they see in everybody else. You know, when you uh, last year we added teams to the league, and one of the teams we added was the conference champion. And this year we've added another team to the league, and one of the teams picked to win the national championship. We have five teams ranked in the top ten in the AP poll, first time in history uh, of any league. You know, I think we have uh, nine or ten teams in Ken Palm's top forty or thirty-seven, whatever it is that, that he does. And so, you know, it's just. Uh, Eighth is not an insult, you know, but it's just, it's not our expectation. So we, we don't take it as an insult. If I'm them, I'm looking at it and maybe doing the same thing, but they're not in practice with us every day. They don't know how big our hearts are, how fierce competitors we are. And at the end of the day, doesn't matter where you rank, still got to play that 40 minutes, you know, on the floor. And that's, that's what we're focused on. It's one day at a time, getting better. And uh, we believe if we do all the right little things on a daily basis, then we'll get the big result. One other guy that I want to specifically ask you about is David Castillo because there's been a lot of noise about him in the offseason, obviously a high-level recruit that you guys brought in. Where does he stack up compared to other true freshmen that you've had when they arrive on campus? He is as mature of a freshman as I've ever been around. Uh, his leadership skills, his ability to have tough conversations with people with their smile, with a smile on his face, his willingness to be coached, the way he prepares to prepare to win, uh, taking care of his body, being in the gym early, staying late, uh, studying film, uh, 
Yeah, he, he's not your average freshman. He's going to be a special player for us. Now, I know uh, we've got a couple of days before the first exhibition game, but if I were to ask you right now, and I know you won't tell me, but do you know who your starting five will be on night one? Uh, no, they're still determining that, right? We're going to whoever wins. I, I feel like I got nine, maybe ten guys who I feel comfortable in the starting lineup. I, I think it's more important to me is finding out who's going to be the five on the floor at the end of the close game. With as much depth as you guys have, how realistic is it for the rotation once you get into the heart of the season being as deep as the actual roster is or, or where are you going to have to learn how to trim that down? Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll determine that. You know, and, and maybe you don't. I mean, the Tulane team back in the day, you know, they had the posse come off the bench. And, you know, they like everybody, Rick, Rick Pitino uh, at Kentucky, he, he consistently played nine, ten, Guys, they won a national championship. They did it legal. It's, it's been done before, so the players are going to determine that. And, um, you just never know from game to game. You know, I, 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 what I love is that because of the depth, we have really competitive practices. Now, I'm a big offensive guy, specifically shooting the basketball, because I think nobody's ever won a game by – you know, oh, the other team scored two points, but we scored zero. You know, that's not how the game works. It's you got to score more points than the other team. You added a lot of guys that if they were on the roster last year would have led the team in three-point percentage. How important was it to move forward and find more guys that could shoot the ball from the outside? It was extremely important, as important as that was finding guys with high basketball IQs. Uh, one of the reasons we didn't shoot the ball as well last year is because we didn't pass the guy as well. We might have passed it to the other team better than we did it to ourselves. We right? had almost 500 turnovers. And so this year, with better passers, better IQ, the guys are going to get better shots. So we'll naturally shoot the ball. The last thing I'll ask you about is the non-conference schedule. I know some people have been disappointed by it or asked questions about how it shook out. What is your philosophy moving forward in, in scheduling in the non-conference with as tough as a 20-game conference schedule in the Big 12 can be? Yeah, when they switched from uh, 18 to 20, added two more high major games to your schedule, you can't play seven high major games in the non-conference. There's no reason to play 27 high major games, you know, and, uh, so um, that was the adjustment. Um, we're going to get the extra two in conference. And, uh, we still got LSU coming to the house. We still have to go to St. John's. We still go to uh, Wichita State. And, you know, and then we'll play Drake in Kansas. That, that, the, the Drake game, they're, they're a really good team. And uh, Coach, you know, Ben, you know, all the national championships, you know, where he's at before. Mm -hmm. you know, and so it's going to be good. And now that game may have. You know, had we not added the games, the Big 12 games, maybe that is a high major game that you play there. Um, but it's just, you know, when you're trying to get guys to build a rotation and, you know, you got to give yourself a chance, you know. <laughs> you you, you got to be wise in decision making. Now, you know, next year if we go back to 18, then the schedule will change something. And I was going to ask you about that to follow up because when we talked to Gene at Football Media Days. He made the comment that, yeah, I think the basketball coaches would like it to go back to 18. Is, is that where you sit on that? Yeah, I'd like to go, go back to 18, and that way we can schedule some more home and homes and, you know, that kind of thing, and maybe a neutral site game somewhere. And so play a high major team mm -hmm. in Kansas City. I know our fans would enjoy that. And so, you know, it, but there's got to be a balance. And, and I, I know our fans will understand.